I wish to add my greetings, not only to the faculty and the students, the members of the university family, but especially to our friends from the city and our neighborhood. The University of Redlands is always pleased to extend the value of the university to this entire community in every way possible. We are important to each other, so welcome to your university. As the students met for them early in the year, and I suppose first even in the summer, to talk about this wonderful convocation series, President Carter was their first choice. And this has been achieved this evening.
Carter negotiated a historic peace agreement between Egypt and Israel and gave full recognition to communist China. Since leaving office, President Carter founded the Carter Center in Atlanta, Georgia in 1982. Aside from housing the office of the former president in the Jimmy Carter Library and Museum, the Carter Center also includes the Carter Menel Human Rights Foundation, the Task Force for Child Survival, Global 2000 Incorporated, and the Carter Center of Emory University. The Carter Menil Human Rights Foundation was established by Jimmy Carter and Dominique de Menil to promote the protection of human rights throughout the world. Each year, the foundation presents a $100,000 prize to one or two individuals or organizations for courageous and effective work to further human rights. The Task Force for Child Survival, formed in 1984, facilitates immunization and other survival efforts in developing countries around the world. Global 2000, a private organization established by President Carter, which consists of privately funded demonstration projects in both health and agriculture in order to develop self-sufficiency in health standards and food production around the world. But probably the central component of the Carter Center is the Carter Center at Emory University. The primary activities of this center are carried out through the efforts of nine fellows who combine rigorous scholarship with policy proposal and recommendations in the areas of international affairs, Middle East studies, Latin American studies, Soviet studies, international security and arms control, health policy, human rights, and conflict resolution. In addition to his involvement with the Carter Center, the former president has been both a volunteer member and board of director member of Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity is an ecumenical Christian housing ministry whose objective is to eliminate poverty housing from the world by building and or renovating houses and selling them to needy families at no profit and at no interest. Mr. Carter has also just come out with his fifth book, which he co-wrote with Rosalind, entitled Everything to Gain, Making the Most Out of the Rest of Your Life. He has also been a distinguished professor at Emory University since 1982, and in his spare time, <laughs> Mr. Carter recently climbed the Kalapatar Peak of the Himalayan Mountains. <laughs> that peak, by the way, is a mere 18,500 feet above sea level. American writer Bernard Edmonds once said, to dream anything that you want to dream, that is the beauty of the human mind. To do anything that you want to do, that is the strength of the human will. To trust yourself, to test your limits, that is the courage to succeed. President Carter has been a dreamer. He has succeeded in doing nearly everything he has set out to do. He has trusted himself and tested his limits. But most importantly, he has demonstrated over and over again that he has the courage to succeed. And it is in that vein that he was selected as our top choice for convocation speakers this year. Please help me welcome the former President of the United States, Jimmy Carter. You don't have a 